from its status in the solar system to some of the unique things about it and more. Join me as I show you Ceres, Facts and History, The Mysterious Dwarf Planet. Number 10. What is Ceres? Dwarf planet Ceres is the largest object in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, and the only dwarf planet located in the inner solar system. It was the first member of the asteroid belt to be discovered when Giuseppe Piazzi spotted it in 1801, and when Darwin arrived in 2015, it became the first dwarf planet to receive a visit from a spacecraft. Called an asteroid for many years, Ceres is so much bigger and so different from its rocky neighbors that scientists classified it as a dwarf planet in 2006. Even though Ceres comprises 25% of the asteroid belt's total mass, tiny Pluto is still 14 times more massive. If you wanted to compare it to the Earth, think of it like this. If the Earth was a nickel, Ceres would be a poppy seed in comparison. Number 9. The History and Discovery of Ceres the finding of Ceres is a bit more in-depth than we teased in the last entry, so here's a bit of a deeper look at its finding. Johann Ellert Bode first suggested that an undiscovered planet could exist between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter in 1772. Kepler had already noticed the gap between Mars and Jupiter in 1596. Bode observed that there was a regular pattern in the size of the orbits of known planets, and that the pattern was marred only by the large gap between Mars and Jupiter. A curious finding indeed. The pattern predicted that the missing planet ought to have an orbit with a radius near 2.8 astronomical units (AU). William Herschel's discovery of Uranus in 1781, near the predicted distance for the next body beyond Saturn, increased faith the beliefs of Bode. And in 1800, a group headed by Franz Xavier von Zach, editor of the Monat Leash Correspondence, sent requests to 24 experienced astronomers whom he dubbed the Celestial Police, asking that they combine their efforts and begin a methodical search for the expected planet. Although they did not discover Ceres, they later found several large asteroids. But this wasn't the end, this was just the beginning. One of the astronomers selected for the search was Giuseppe Piazzi, a Catholic priest at the Academy of Palermo, Sicily. Before receiving his invitation to join the group, Piazzi discovered Ceres in January 1801 though he didn't know it at the time. Rather, he thought it was a comet and apparently found Ceres 24 times. Eventually, he sent his findings to his colleagues and by the end of 1801, they had tracked down Ceres and was able to further document its movements. But was it a dwarf planet right then and there? Nope. Number 8. Classification Issues Something you must remember is that when it came to early astronomy is that the universe as a whole was still unknown in the grand scale and various notions about were changing and evolving with each century a new discovery. The categorization of Ceres has changed more than once and has been the subject of some disagreement over the years and decades since its finding. Johann Ellert Bode believed Ceres to be the missing planet he had proposed to exist between Mars and Jupiter. At a distance of 419 million kilometers, 2.8 AU from the Sun, Ceres was assigned a planetary symbol and remained listed as a planet in astronomy books and tables, along with 2 Pallas, 3 Juno, and 4 Vesta for half a century. As other objects were discovered in the neighborhood of Ceres, it was realized that Ceres represented the first of a new class of objects. In 1802, with the discovery of 2 Pallas, William Herschel coined the term asteroid, star-like, for these bodies writing that they resemble small stars so much as hardly to be distinguished from them, even by very good telescopes. As the first such body to be discovered, Ceres was given the designation 1 Ceres under the modern system of minor planet designations. By the 1860s, the existence of a fundamental difference between asteroids such as Ceres and the major planets was widely accepted, though a precise definition of planet was never formulated at the time anyway. So what changed? Pluto, that's what. If you recall, for a long time Pluto was the ninth planet of the solar system and still is in the minds of many. But in 2006, a massive debate waged between scientists and astronomers as to whether Pluto was a planet or something else. This of course brought up Ceres, 
who at one time was considered a planet before the change to asteroid classification. After a long debate and some somewhat arbitrary definitions of planet, both Pluto and Ceres were labeled dwarf planets by the committee in charge, though some still think of Ceres as an asteroid. Before we continue to break down everything about this dwarf planet, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can continue to improve our content for you, the viewer. Be sure to also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Number 7. Structure and Surface Ceres is more similar to the terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, than its asteroid neighbors, but is much less dense. One of the similarities is a layered interior, but Ceres' layers aren't as clearly defined. It probably has a solid core and a mantle made of water ice. In fact, Ceres could be composed of as much as 25% water. If that is correct, Ceres has more water than Earth does. Ceres' crust is rocky and dusty with large salt deposits. The salts on Ceres aren't like table salt, sodium chloride, but instead are made of different minerals like magnesium sulfate. As for the surface, it is covered in countless small young craters, but none are larger than 175 miles, 280 kilometers in diameter. This is surprising given that the dwarf planet must have been hit by numerous large asteroids during its 4.5 billion year lifetime. The lack of craters might be due to layers of ice just below the surface. The surface features could smooth out over time if ice or another lower density material such as salt is just below the surface. It's also possible that past hydrothermal activity such as ice volcanoes erased some large craters. Within some of Ceres' craters, there are regions that are always in shadow. It's possible that without direct sunlight, these cold traps could have water ice in them for long periods of time. Number 6. Orbits, Rotations, and Seasons Ceres takes 1,682 Earth days, or 4.6 Earth years, to make one trip around the Sun. As Ceres orbits the Sun, it completes one rotation every nine hours making its day length one of the shortest in the solar system. It's not the shortest. That would be another dwarf planet near Neptune called Haumea, but still that's a day that's basically one-third of what we have here on Earth. Ceres' axis of rotation is tilted just four degrees with respect to the plane of its orbit around the Sun. That means it spins nearly perfectly upright and doesn't experience seasons like other more tilted planets do which combined with the lack of an atmosphere, as far as scientists can tell, means that it's not the most habitable of planets, regular or dwarf out there, but it still holds a big place in our culture, believe it or not. Number 5. Pop Culture The largest body in the asteroid belt, Ceres, has amassed a number of references in science fiction stories of the 20th and 21st centuries. In the TV series The Expanse, Ceres is inhabited by humans, and in the PC game Descent, one of the secret levels takes place on Ceres. In the video game Destiny, Ceres was colonized by an alien race called the Fallen at the end of humanity's golden age. Ceres was later destroyed by a civilization of post-humans who inhabit the asteroid belt. Believe it or not though, Ceres has ties to something that many of you consume every single day. Ceres is named for the Roman goddess of corn and harvests. The word cereal comes from the same name. Number 4. Formation Ceres formed along with the rest of the solar system about 4.5 billion years ago when gravity pulled swirling gas and dust in to become a small dwarf planet. Scientists describe Ceres as an embryonic planet, which means it started to form but didn't quite finish. Nearby Jupiter's strong gravity prevented it from becoming a fully formed planet. About 4 billion years ago, Ceres settled into its current location among the leftover pieces of planetary formation in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. It almost makes you wonder what could have been if Jupiter had been just a little bit farther away, or a bit smaller in size, and thus wouldn't have exerted its gravity on Ceres. What kind of planet would it have been if it was fully grown? Would it have been our fifth planet instead of Jupiter? We'll never know, but the questions are intriguing. Number 3. Exploration Despite us knowing a lot about Ceres, the fact of the matter is that pretty much everything we found out about the dwarf planet has been made at ground level. Not for lack of trying to get there with something else, mind you. 
In 1981, a proposal for an asteroid mission was submitted to the European Space Agency, ESA, named the Asteroidal Gravity Optical and Radar Analysis, AGORA. This spacecraft was to launch sometime in 1990 to 1994 and perform two flybys of large asteroids. The preferred target for this mission was Vesta. Agora would reach the asteroid belt either by a gravitational slingshot trajectory past Mars or by means of a small ion engine. However, the proposal was refused by the ESA. Future projects were proposed by or drawn up for NASA, the ESA, and even the Soviet Union, but none have been approved or taken place in anything outside of concept. The Chinese Space Agency is designing a sample return mission from Ceres that would take place during the 2020s, so perhaps that could be our first close look at Ceres should things go well. Number 2. Potential for Life Ceres is one of the few places in our solar system where scientists would like to search for possible signs of life. It has something a lot of other planets don't – water. Here on Earth, water is essential for life. So it's possible that with this ingredient and a few other conditions met, life could maybe exist there. Living things on Ceres, if they are there at all, would likely be very small microbes similar to bacteria. And while Ceres may not have living things today, there could be signs it harbored life in the past. If the solar system has shown us anything in the recent past, it's that we don't know as much as we think we do about certain things in our solar system. So even if there's only a slim chance that there could be the possibility of life on Ceres, big or small, it's worth checking out. Now granted, getting to Ceres right now isn't the easiest of things, but if we were able to breach that gap and study it, that could be potentially life-changing. Now sure, we're speculating a lot here because we don't know if there is or isn't life on Ceres, but there could be. And isn't that enough of a reason to at least go and try to find life on it? Seems logical to us, but why stop there? What if we could do more? Number 1. Living on Ceres? As you all know, or at least hopefully know, our goal for this current decade is to go and reach Mars. Then we will start to build a colony there and potentially start expanding across the solar system. What does this have to do with Ceres? Simple. Where is it located? In the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, right? Well, when it comes to space travel, everyone thinks that we need to just shoot for the end goal. But that's not true, or at least not in certain circumstances. We're aiming for Mars because of various factors, including it's our neighbor, it has water, and we feel that we can live there, as well as the fact that it is a gateway to the back half of the solar system. But just trying to jump from Mars to Jupiter could be fraught with problems. So what if we had a stop in between? Yeah, what if Ceres could become like a waypoint station for us to use to help ensure that we got to Jupiter and beyond? It may sound like more work, but given the state of our technology right now and how we're handling things on the space front front, especially with the recent success of the SpaceX launch with astronauts, having a buffer zone and an extra place to stop, if you will, could be huge. And many are already thinking of putting similar stations on moons like Titan, Europa, and maybe more. It would help open things up, and that would be a godsend for future missions. Plus, as time goes on, we could send out multiple ships to multiple parts of the solar system based on where the dwarf planet is in its rotation, which would be a good place to launch probes and satellites as well to further explore things. Which of course brings us to the asteroid belt that Ceres resides in. If we have a station there, we could further explore the belt, and potentially even mine the belt for resources. It may seem like a far-fetched idea at present, but when you look deeper into what Ceres means and what it could be, it doesn't seem like such a long shot. Thanks for watching everyone. What did you think of this look at Ceres and its facts and history? Did you learn something interesting about the dwarf planet today? Which of these facts stood out the most to you? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.